Regional. Near line. Gold line. Hey, Stephanie, what are you doing? I'm trying to organize my objects into the appropriate storage classes. But why? Because if I organize them properly, I could save a lot of money. Well, that I know. But why are you doing them one by one? Don't you know you could automate this entire process simply by using lifecycle management rules? Sounds like you're about to show me how. Let's jump right in. Before talking about lifecycle management, we need to have a clear understanding of the different prices and features that each one of the different classes provides. So let's go ahead and go through a high-level overview of them. First, we have multi-regional storage, which will provide geo-redundancy, meaning that it's generally good for storing frequently and globally accessed content. Then we have regional storage, which is great for data needing to be kept in a single region, meaning that it's best suited for data sets that will only be accessed from a particular region. Then we also have nearline storage, which is meant for infrequently accessed data. Here you pay a cheaper price for storing your data, but you must also pay for retrieving it. The math works out so that if you access the data less than once per month, then you're actually saving money by using nearline. And lastly, we have codeline. The SLAs for codeline are the same as nearline, but the price for storing an object is even lower. Here, we also have a fee for retrieving the data. And in this case, the math works out so that if you access the data less than once per year, you'll be saving money. Now, lifecycle management is an easy and simple way to automatically move objects from one storage class to another by simply setting a set of rules instead of having to do the process manually. The idea is that if you are not accessing objects within specific time periods, there is a substantial amount of money that you could save by taking advantage of the different storage classes. The different rules by which you could set these automatic policies are the following. H, created before. Is life, which is basically just asking if you have the latest version, and whether it matches a specific storage class. Let's go into the console now and show you how easy this is to set up. So now that we're in the console, we're going to click on the burger menu and go to the storage section of the console. Here, you'll see a bucket that I created called take five demos. And you'll see that no lifecycle management rules have been specified. If we go into the bucket, you can see a series of objects that I added in two different dates, about three days apart from each other, on the 18th and on the 25th this month. Now, we'll go back to the main page and actually add some of this lifecycle management rules. And click on none, and we'll go ahead and add a rule. Here, we can specify the type of rule that we want to add, age, created by, and so on, that we described earlier. We'll go ahead and select age, and we'll define the age. In this case, we'll set it to 3. We'll go ahead and continue and say what this rule will do, which in this case, will set the objects to code line. We'll go ahead and save this rule. As another example, we'll go ahead and add another rule. This time, if any object is older than one day, it will automatically set that object to near line. Now that we've set up these rules, let's go back to our objects within our bucket to see how they've been classified. Now, we sped up this process for the video, but this usually takes about a day. Now, you can see all of our different objects within the bucket. And you can see that the storage class has changed to code line for some of them and regionals for other. Now, this is a really quick demo of how you can use lifecycle management to manage your objects. Well, now that my lifecycle management is automated, I can spend much more time developing cool features. And with all the money you're saving, you should ask for a raise. You're right. Well, don't forget everyone to like, subscribe, and share. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. What lifecycle management strategies would you take on Google Cloud Storage? Comment below. And if you'd like to get in contact with us, click on the link in the description.